Today, I'm going to be getting some help with my spending. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. Now, a lot of you might have seen my recent video on how I think wealth grows. In that video, I go through how I am allocating my money through investments and how through lockdown at least, I've been saving a considerable amount. And in that video, a lot of you, rightfully so, pointed out that my expenses are really low at about 600 pound a month. That includes like my mortgage and it includes my car, all sorts of things like that. And a lot of people have been totally surprised by that. And you should be because it's not a normal situation for me to have such lower expenses. And I also didn't disclose in that video, well, I forgot to disclose that I've split that between myself and my partner. She even reminded me straight after that video and I was like, God, I'm gonna have to explain that one day, and I? So yeah, that's my half of the expenses of my family. And that's because up until recently, we have split our expenses. My partner and I don't share our income. We share the bills in the house. Something that may or may not have changed very recently. Okay, I'm boring you now. I don't wanna go through every caveat and everything that I missed in the last video. There's gonna be a lot of things that I say that might need clarifying, but I can't just clarify everything, otherwise you'll get really bored. Before lockdown, I was spending absolutely loads on random crap. And then lockdown happened, investments start happening and all this YouTube stuff started happening. So I really tightened up my finances. I tried to become as good as possible. And if we start to come out of these lockdowns, my spending might go up again. There's a lot of things that we just don't do at the moment, like going out to restaurants, going to sports, all that sort of stuff. And I put out a plea to anybody who would be willing to help me with my spending. And lots of you recommended Jennifer from Mama Fuffa as the one to go to for budgeting. So I reached out and it turns out she's ridiculously helpful and she really loves budgeting. But what's been hardest for me, and I know a lot of you are gonna be in the same position as this, is that I got started watching videos on YouTube. I was watching people like Graham Stephan and Mama Fuffa and Andre Jick and all that sort of stuff. And watching all those videos and reading all that stuff, taking in that information, that got me to change my mindset about money. If you've ever seen this channel before, it's all about me having absolutely no control over my finances. And then one day I've just woken up and gone, ah, oh, maybe I should really think about this. And it's because investing and saving money has always been so alien to me. I was never taught about it. And again, I know lots of you are in this similar situation. But the latest battle has been that because I've changed my mindset and I've decided to maybe cut a bit of spending, maybe try and save more, my partner hasn't. She's just been sitting there watching Made in Chelsea or whatever and uh, hasn't really come round to my way of thinking yet. And if I ever talked about it, if I ever explained anything, it would always just end up in a massive raging argument. Because like anyone who doesn't really want to change, it's very hard for you to actively try to change them. Trust me, I've tried it with like heroin addicts and everything. So what I did over the course of many, many months was I just left Graham Stephan videos on in the background. And every now and then Graham's dashing good looks would catch her eye and she'd also learn something about financials and investing. And eventually this has opened up a conversation with us and she's starting to see it my way. Grade A manipulation there, by the way. I'm, I'm proud of that. <laughs> she's gonna absolutely kill me when she sees this. <laughs> Now, I know I'm going on a bit, but that's a really important part of this story because she's starting to see it very similar to how I do. Now, of course, I'm not necessarily going to be the guru of it all, but I've come to see things in a different light and it might actually be improving our lives. And the thing that finally tipped her over the edge was when Jennifer said we should download her money stack spreadsheet. So we had a bit of a Zoom call and we decided we should collaborate on this project. And if you go over to her channel right now, you'll see that she goes through my finances and absolutely tears it apart. This is good, this is healthy, it's, I'm growing. I'm growing as a person. <laughs> so we got the money stack spreadsheet, we both sat down, that's me and my partner, and man, was it a fucking eye opener. Usually this would have been a massive raging argument, but today it was totally different. We really opened our eyes. We sat down and we went to it. And just take a moment here to ask yourself, have you ever sat down and really gone through what you spend in a month? If you have, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, 
Oh my God, you're going to piss yourself. So we sat down together and we picked last October as the month that we were gonna to choose to go through and really pick apart our spending. That's outside of lockdown and quite a busy month for us last year. We figured that if lockdown ends, that would be what we're most likely to go back to. We promised not to rant, not to judge, we removed all throwable objects, and we really got down to it. And, and then we did our budget. It didn't take long and we learned a lot about ourselves. And oh my God, you wouldn't believe what I spent my money on. McDonald's, it must be like 13, 14 times I went to McDonald's just in October. Oh God. The amount of money we're spending on food. Oh, do you realize how much money you just waste on terrible food? Crazy. And on her side, and I know lads, uh, you're gonna agree with me, and I'm probably gonna sound really sexist here, but makeup and face creams are so expensive. Is that sexist is to say they're really expensive? Or is it sexist to say you don't need them? You could do cheaper ones, right? You can do cheaper ones, you can do cheaper ones. Cheaper ones, that's, that's not wrong, right? Oh, this is a minefield. And I tell you what, things like going to McDonald's and spending loads on expensive toiletries, that changed the next day. Literally tonight, as I've just filmed this, is the first time we've been to McDonald's in months. And that was simply because the kid has been so freaking hard today. We just didn't realize how much we were wasting money. And I'll just put a little note in here that I think this was one of the most freeing and crazy experiences that we had. We thought this was gonna be really cringy and really tough, but actually we had a lot of fun and it's probably made our relationship a lot better. And even after we finished just laying out our expenses, something clicked. All the anger about our spending and all the worries about our money just kind of got a little bit better. I'm sorry to get all flouncy here, but really have a look at your spending Lay it out and you'll feel much better about it because you'll know what you can do to change it and you'll know what you can do to maybe pay off some debt or maybe even put into investments. Just that made our life better. I'm, I'm just going on a bit too far now, uh, sorry. And then we passed it on to Jennifer who went through it and she's come up with some amazing things that we just didn't think about. She's even planned out a scenario where I might even be able to quit my job. So today, and I know that's been a long intro, today I wanna to show off how I've implemented Jennifer's ideas. Some of them I've definitely taken on board. Some of them, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'll, I'll get there. I'm not gonna go through everything like, oh, it was this and now it's this. I think that's a bit boring. But I wanna start and say that my household income is 4,387 pounds. That's the most accurate we can make it. And if you took October 2019 as an example, we were overspending by 169 pounds. I realized at this moment that we were fucking stupid. And I realized that that 4,387 pound per month is so much money in comparison to what other people earn out there. You might be watching this and you think, oh, it's great for him. He's got 4,000 pound a month coming into his household. And I think you're right in thinking that. I totally validate your position on that because I look at other people. I mean, I was even looking at Jennifer and going, she must be earning so much money, blah, 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 YouTube, rah, rah, rah. And it turns out it doesn't matter how much you're earning. If you're being stupid with your money, you're always gonna be in a deficit. So I apologize to anybody who's earning less than me uh, when I complain about money because I didn't realize how much we were earning. I didn't realize that we actually earned quite a lot. And a lot of other people are gonna be thinking, oh, he only earns that. Yeah. So as a paramedic, not contributing to a pension, I earn 2,389 pounds a month, and my partner earns 1,858 pounds a month uh, doing what she does. And you can see that we were overspending on our budget by 169 pounds. So Jen's been through this and she's picked out a lot of things that we should probably be doing with our life. So I'm gonna tell you what we have implemented, what we're probably not gonna bring in, and then I'm gonna tell you how I've implemented some of these things and just what a change it's made to our lives. And Jennifer started by adding, yes, adding 10% to our mortgage, as in she wants us to pay 10% of our mortgage off. Now I admit we haven't started doing that yet. There's a few things that I need to bring in before we can start doing that, but I do believe that Jennifer's 10% rule on paying off debt is really important. 
So we will be implementing that as soon as we can. Also, we have a car load. We've got two new kids and we needed a big fat car to stuff them into. I think we made a good decision because we went and got a Dacia Duster. Don't judge, in fact, praise, because I think we did a really good job at financing that car. But the car loan still exists and because I paid for my car outright and because we split our finances, that car payment has always been on her side. So joining us together has now made that car payment a little bit easier for all of us. And Jen still wants to make it our highest priority to pay off that debt. We had that conversation, it's a really low finance loan, much lower than what you can get in the stock market at the moment. But Jen makes a really good point. It's about your mindset, it's about clearing debt off your mind. It's the same thing everyone says about their mortgage. Once they've paid off their mortgage, they're free and they feel free. And she has kind of convinced me that if I can get that car loan paid off, we've got an extra 300 quid a month to just play with. We, we do have a cleaner and I know that sounds pretty snooty, but she's like a mate. And Jen and I didn't see eye to eye on this one. She just thinks I should be doing more cleaning. So, so does the missus. But I feel like having our cleaner around to clean the house, one saves our relationship because I can't do cleaning. <laughs> I don't know if any of the guys out there are the same as me, but I just don't have an eye for it. I think that I think this desk is really tidy, but it's so not. And two, I think I put a value on £24 a week as saving me a lot of time. I don't have to stress. I don't have to think about cleaning. And it's just one of the things. It's a mindset thing for me. I feel like I'm buying back time. Do you get that or not? Or am I just so stuck up because I've got a cleaner? Let me know in the comments below. And then we come to the big one, household shopping and takeaways. Oh man, we were spending like over 600 quid on random food and loads of takeaways. Particularly me on my job where I just kind of pop into shops and go snack it. I realize my job's quite stressful and tiring, but I need to have more discipline. Jennifer basically shook us and went, nah, down to 350. And we just started thinking more logically about what we're buying. <laughs> And it worked. We haven't done anything like tracking shopping with apps or anything like that or going around the supermarket and filming what I'm doing and stuff. But we have taken into account things like meal prepping. Well, I haven't, she has. But <laughs> but we are thinking about it a little bit more and I think as we get more used to that, while it is a bit of a hassle now, I think it could become habit later and maybe just become a normal part of our life. And takeaways, we haven't done a single takeaway. Just today was the first time I've had McDonald's in a long time. The kids have been really hard today. We've had no sleep and I had a pretty bad reaction to the second vaccine. So we've just decided to have a day off it. But it is just once and we're sticking to that once a month takeaway thing. And we've saved ourselves 150 quid a month. That's three realty incomes. Or three Nicola's. Is Nicola still $50? I don't care. Internet and mobile phone, I'm really, really good at this one. I basically win this one. She's the problem on this one. We're gonna work on that. But I've already done the right things with my mobile phone, I think. I actually took out a 21 month interest-free credit card and bought my, my phone on it. If you buy the phone outright and then get a five pound SIM card, you can save a ton of money. So I basically put myself on a contract, but it was totally interest-free and totally commission-free as well. Just have a good think about that one because I haven't done that one in two years and they might have caught up to that hack now. The next important part is a tough one, giving. But I don't wanna give to Jerry. Okay, so giving is a hard sell. But for Jennifer, and I completely commend this, it's a deal breaker for her. She believes in giving, firstly because it's nice, and second because it generates a wealthy mindset. I'm struggling to get behind this, but we're willing to try. We're gonna start small. We're gonna start less than this because <laughs> I'm just trying to dip my toe into this. And you watching this, you must think this too, right? You must be thinking, oh man, giving stuff away. And trust me, go look at one of Jennifer's videos where she breaks down everything that she spends. She gives away so much money to charity. I just can't believe it. I cannot believe how much she gives away. So I'm gonna try, but baby steps, right? And we're currently trying to save just 20 pound a month into a big pot and then eventually we're just gonna give it somewhere. I wanna give it to some charity in one big go. I don't wanna give it to one of the bigger charities because I know how much money gets wasted in those massive charities. I personally don't think there's any proper worthwhile charities in my local area. I think people in my local area just don't need the money. 
So it might be that I just save up this part of money this year and then maybe one of you guys can suggest a charity for me to give it in, in your local area. If you suggest stuff, I'll check it out and maybe just send that money that way. Because I can't think of any charities off the top of my head. And then if we like it and we find it good and we find it has changed our mindset, we'll start to build up that pot a bit bigger next year. At least I hope so. This is a tough one and I'm going to try. And the next one Jennifer tore apart was my financial freedom goal. And this really surprised me because Jen bangs on about financial freedom all the time on her channel. So I thought I was going to get loads of praise from Jen on this one. I thought 1,000, 1,600 months saving straight into investments. She's going to love that. Nope. Jen wants me to vastly reduce my payments into financial freedom. I haven't done that yet. I've still got my goal of filling my ISA at the moment and I'm committed to that. I'm going to see. I like my investments growing. I like that pot of money growing. I like to see it compound bigger, not quicker. So this one, because I've recently locked onto this mad goal, I'm trying to consider it, but not right now. More on that one in a few minutes, because to me, Jen puts in a massive game changer at the end. But I tell you what, the most important thing to us, especially the most important thing to the missus, she's not willing to come on camera and say it. But the thing that has helped us out the most is these sinking funds. Now, sinking funds are simply things that you save up for for regular purchases. So if there's anything in your life that you purchase regularly, like it could be bills, it could be gym memberships, anything like that, I should put it into a sinking fund and start to build up that pot. I should be saving money for it and then when it comes to the time to be paying it off, I'll use that sinking fund to just get rid of that bill. So things like your car MOT, you know that's coming around every year, save up for it, and then on the month that the MOT comes in, you're not scrambling about to try and pay for it. I've done that for years and on my MOT month, it's freaking horrible. But this year on my MOT month, it was a breeze. It was brilliant. Christmases and birthdays, I'm totally against them, but apparently it's a thing we have to do. So yeah, we have to save up for that now. I pay for my climbing and my gym membership yearly because it brings down that fee. That way, in that month, my investments don't suffer. And the way I've done this is through the banking app Monzo. Don't worry, not sponsored or nothing. This is literally what I've started doing because I think it's so easy to do. We've now got a joint account. We're bringing together our finances. So every month, we pop 350 quid into that joint account and we're only allowed to use that money for that month. That's basically for our shopping, our toiletries, and any minor clothing things that we need to do. And right now, it's the 11th of January, and we still have £260 left for the month. We're absolutely killing it. We have brought down our shopping spend massively. And this has made it so easy. And then we've got these separate sinking funds. They're little savings account that you can open very easily in Monzo. So I've got a holiday pot, which we pop in £100 a month each month. That'll eventually get us a holiday or maybe two or three holidays a year. Things like Christmas presents, which I loathe, but we're saving £90 a month. That's for presents for other people, for some reason. And <laughs> so, yeah, I can't even give presents to people that I love. How am I going to afford giving to charity? <laughs> we put £200 a month in just for the kids' stuff. And that's for any big activities that we might see coming in the future. I like going trampolining with my kids. That's good fun. Car payments, £153 a month. That's for both of our cars to get them MOT'd service, that sort of thing. But we've made a part based on last year's calculations. That's what we're putting in. Our help to buy loan, which is one of our absolute sins. That's one of the reasons why our mortgage is so low, because we do still owe a lot of money on our new build house. I'm going to do a video on help to buy because I think I've got good insight into how help to buy works. I've done it twice, and I think it could be the reason for the next UK housing crisis. That's a nice teaser for a future video, which I'll never get around to, right? Climbing, £41 a month, and giving, £20 a month. These are all sinking funds that we've decided to make, and they're very easy to make through Monzo. And all I can say to you is that the missus came to me the other day, almost in tears, just saying how much of a weight has been lifted, all because of these sinking funds and all because of these pots. She just knows where the money's coming from now. She's thinking about it in a different way, and I bet a lot of you guys do think the same way as well. At the bottom here, we have a lot of development fees. That's because I'm a paramedic and she's a nurse. We have to pay to do our job. And I'll tell you what, she didn't need to get rid of any of these fun things because a lot of these I don't actually pay for. Amazon Prime, I don't actually pay for because I get it for free through my life insurance. And Netflix and Disney Plus. How many people out there actually pay a whole subscription for Netflix and Disney Plus? How many people out there just share it with their family? Not me, obviously. 
But when it came to the end of it, Jen managed to reduce our deficit down to 93p. And everything but 93p has been accounted for in this budget. And she's increased my debt payoff, she's increased my mortgage payoff, she's given me a holiday, she's given me Christmases, birthdays. She's done a good job. But that by no means is the best part. The best part is she actually made some calculations that could mean I go part-time today. Jen's calculated that if we just make a few more changes, we might both be able to go part-time. We might both be able to start having some freedom now. She's kept the 10% extra mortgage. She's kept the 10% extra car loan. She's bought the food budget down to 350 and we are trialing that heavily right now to see if we can do it. And as you saw earlier, we're doing pretty well. She made some cuts that we probably won't be willing or able to make like childcare fees and cleaner fees. So that makes things a little bit different. She's kept the giving to charity and she wants me to give a lot to charity in my opinion. We'll see, we're trying Jen, we're trying just chill baby steps, yeah? <laughs> and a lot of our savings has come from reducing our financial freedom contributions. And that's where she got me. If the goal of this thing is to have more freedom and have more time and work less, then if I've got the opportunity to do that, why don't I just do that now? And this has given me a lot to think about because I don't actually see myself never working. I know at 60 or 70, I will definitely have to slow down. I can't be lugging drunks off the street for the rest of my life. So I will have to have some sort of financial backing in place. But my life is for living right and not working all the time, which is all I seem to be doing at the moment. It's all about the mindset, all about clearing your mortgage, all about clearing the debt. It makes you feel so much better. Maybe if I just cut down my expenses, I can choose when to work. It's definitely given me something to think really hard about. For now, I'm still trying to meet my investment goals. That hasn't changed just yet. I will let you know as soon as I figure that one out. And trust me, I know people think this channel is quite big, but trust me, YouTube is not an option. I'm not earning that much off YouTube. And I'm also not convinced the ways that you can earn off YouTube are completely sustainable. I'm just not convinced. I'm sorry to dampen anyone's YouTube hopes and dreams, but it takes so much work to get anywhere in YouTube. There is so much graft involved to earn any real money. So that's it. That's what we're living off at the moment. And they're the changes that we've made. I have been ridiculously transparent there and that's scary. But then again, I feel like I'm safe because I basically don't own anything. You can see. I realize how ignorant that makes me sound though because I know that there's a lot of people who earn a lot less and have a lot less stuff. It's just weird how when you've got a certain amount of money, you live to those standards and you shouldn't be. We should be trying to live below our means to save more money or maybe try and live a little bit below my means and have more time to spend with my kids and stuff. If you're in a similar boat to me and this has resonated with you, just let me know. I'd love to be able to talk to somebody who's in a similar position and maybe this could really help you out. If you've never seen Jennifer's channel, Mama Fufa, then go see it. It's got so much value. She's pretty much the number one UK investment or finance channel out there. She knows her stuff and she's doing everything to help people. And go have a look at her spreadsheet. And yes, I paid for it as well. And in six months, I want to do another update and see if I've kept to these standards. See if we are still together. <laughs> I want to see if we've managed to keep this up and see how much it's changed our lives. I know this saving thing is probably the most important part of investments. You have to build a base. You have to build up your investments by saving yourself. There isn't some magical thing that's going to get you to the moon. Even Tesla and Bitcoin would not be able to turn your £100 into a million pounds. You have to keep saving. You have to build that base. And, and then we did our budget. It didn't take long and we learned a lot about ourselves. The budget, the budget, the budget. <laughs> Fucking dumb. I hope some, I hope some people just appreciate that joke. I, I hope some people just appreciate that joke for the, the crap that it is. <laughs> And on the comments, lots of you mentioned Mama Fofa. Fofa, Mama Fofa, Fofa, Mama, Mama Fofa. <laughs> and lots of you mentioned Jennifer and Mama Fofa. Jennifer, Mama Fofa. But she, I bet she loves saying that, doesn't you? Hi, I'm Jennifer from Mama Fofa. <laughs> 
And lots of you recommended Jennifer from Mama Fufa. <laughs> I can't say it. I can't say it. And lots... <laughs> And lots of you, and lots of you mentioned, and lots of you recommended Jennifer, and lots of you, <laughs> how does she say it every week, man? And lots of you, and lots of you mentioned Jennifer from Mama Fufa. <laughs> oh my God, this is so hard. How do you do this, Jennifer? How do you say this every week? How do you say Jennifer from Mama Fufa every week? How do you do it? <laughs> and lots of you. And lots of you recommended Jennifer from Mama Fufa as the one to go to for budgeting. 